Welcome to the Aftermarket Report with Vegas and Jim, Wall Street News, Sunday's edition. Today's date is October 6, 2019, and Miss Vegas has a great watch list to start the day with. Yeah, good morning, everyone. Hope you had a nice weekend. We are going to talk about Lulu, Costco, Roku, Starbucks, Docu, and BVSN. So before we get started, uh, you can see that Friday was a fantastic day. Market was pretty much a buy signal. We can see from the heat map, Jim's showing you guys that pretty much green, pretty much in all sectors of the market. And we had a really great day on Friday in terms of the options land. I mean, we took advantage of a lot of buying signals we took PEPS, which by the way had fantastic earnings, great guidance. A lot of money was flowing into Pepsi. We took the 139 calls from 26 cents, uh, took them up to over a dollar. You know, doesn't mean not everyone held to the dollar. Some people, you know what, they doubled their money, they got out of the trade. Some people sold at 75, some people sold at a dollar. But you know what, it just goes to show you that a small account can really grow. I mean, $26 could have turned into easily 100 bucks or 75 bucks. That's excellent return on an option trade. Uh, we also have Apple, $0.09, cents, $9 a contract. Those one is up to $0.30. Cents. And um, you know what? Another over 100% trade. And then we have spy calls. Uh, and Dollar called those, and those were a spy straddle from the Farm C. And anyone that took the spy calls, I mean, those went from 10 cents to 60 cents. I mean, mm. fantastic, fantastic day Friday. I mean, this is just a sample of the great calls Friday. The room was just on fire. Just so many great opportunities to make money. And it's like, you just got to focus on the one that, you know, that you're focused on. You don't have to take all of them. Just take the ones that you want and stay in those trades. And uh, great job to many, many people that have made, did very well. Great job. So we're going to just go on to the list for today. And we're going to start off with Lululemon. And, uh, you know, Lululemon, uh, to me, I love the company and uh, love everything that they do. Love the product. I'm a, I'm a shopper of the product. So I'm speaking from my own experience. The brand is great. The quality is great. They actually have a uh, Black Friday sale that has started, um, which is, uh, go sorry, going to be starting uh, November. And uh, there's going to be a lot of really good deals. And I'm looking forward to shopping at Lulu on Black Friday. Either that or I'm going to go shop online for sure. And... Um, now, Lululemon, we had an opportunity to trade that as well. I think the stock is still bullish, and I'm going to let Jim talk about that and what he sees coming up. I think there's still room for Lulu to go higher than what it is right now. I mean, we're under 200 bucks. I still think it's a strong buy. Jim, what are your thoughts on that Lulu? Yeah, I'm looking at Lulu's website right now, and they got jackets even. I mean, they got the Cloudscape jacket, Cloudscape wrap short, and then the long. So, I mean... They got a variety of, of wear from yoga to sweats to jackets to dress wear. Let's go ahead and look at the chart. Right now, I'm going to pull up the yearly. Just show you what the yearly linear chart looks like. It's been on an upward trend all the way from 110.71, which we called out in the room, and it's ran all the way up 100%, almost 100% up to 204. And then she's kind of pulled back. The earnings on this stock is just great i mean beautiful i mean they're in, we're talking billions of dollars so the thing pulled back a little bit it's had a pretty good little sell-off and i think we're starting to get back into the christmas season and this was a christmas special got a resistance on this yearly chart that we needed to break and that's going to be right here at the 190 oh i'm going to say 193.52 i'll make sure what it is here in a second but that red line you can see where we had that top there on the yearly chart only one time it would touch down to the bottom of that channel, and that was right down here at 110, and it bounced right off of it. So we're going to pull up the 20-day now and look at the 20-day. This channel changes in different time frames. 20-day, one hour. You see it just didn't want to touch that bottom of that channel. 
but it definitely the resistance that we got to break is going to be this 193.47 that's a real serious resistance if we can get past that resistance we got a whole new channel to work on and that can go from 193.12 all the way up to right around the 196.60 and if you see on this 20 day chart I'm, I was looking at the three triple top high we had here so if it goes ahead and breaks up to that 196.66, that's going to be a little resistance. And if we can pass that, we'll go back up to the 199.72 area. But that triple top right here at 196.66, where it lines right into that linear channel, linear channel that could be the uh, be the resistance and maybe a pullback or a breakout. And let me pull up the daily one minute just to show you what kind of run it did have on Friday. It ran all the way from one, I had a trend line here at 190.35, and it ran all the way up to a close at 193.12. So if it pulls back a little bit, I'm going to call support right here at 192.01 for your entry. That's going to be your solid entry, or maybe right here at the 192.43. And if it needs to break the resistance, that resistance, like I said earlier on the yearly charts, 193.47, and bring it up all the way to the top of my other look at here my other trend line that matched to the top of that channel right there at 194.98 so those are my extended trend lines along with the linear channel and the next one we're going to talk about is going to be cost okay well as you guys know Costco um, you know what they they did fell short of investors high expectations. I mean Costco did report their quarterly profits um, You know still very brisk slightly missed but the company's shares had pulled back I mean the same stair, same store sale uh, Excluding the gas by the way because you guys know Costco sells gas um, Was a little bit below the average estimate, but you know what? I still think that's not going to change Costco's opportunity for the stock to still go up um, I still think that membership fees are still in line. I think it's a very positive sign. Um, I think they're going to still be expanding. Uh, it's very hard for Costco, um, I think, to not do well. Um, the fact that they missed was very small, and I think the stock has room for more. I mean, I'm still seeing a lot of buying in the stock. And I mean, every time I go there, like I said, there's lineups everywhere. People are spending money. I mean, that company making money. Um, there's a, definitely a pocket pivot. It's above the 20 daily moving average. It's also above the 50 day. I think Costco is still going to go higher than what it's at right now. Again, it's around 291.62. Uh, definitely, definitely going to go higher in my opinion. Jim, what are your thoughts on the Costco chart? Yeah, uh, I had a trend line on cost, and we kind of broke down to it. And then the last couple of days, we've had two green candles on the yearly chart. We've only pulled back to the bottom line of that linear chart at 189.51. You see it bounce right off of it. This week's case study in the room is going to be the linear chart, and I'm going to be posting a lot of charts and, and suggestions on how to use this tool. So this is the yearly chart. We had a yearly high of 307.34 with a resistance at 304.73. Now they are, the reason for this last pop was the, the China store that they opened in China and it was overwhelming. They're gonna be opening a new one. So let's bring this to the 20 day now. We still have, I think we're in the rebound mode now, but I was bullish on it last week, but it didn't work out that way. But the last couple of days it did bounce up. And we're gonna look at the five day chart to show you exactly what happened. We called this out down here right here 267.91 and it did at the end of the week bounce up to 291.95 but it had some trouble uh, Monday Tuesday Wednesday and then started rebounding on Thursday pulled back after hours on the earnings and then bounced right back up and created a new high so that just tells you how bullish this stock is and we're gonna pull it to the daily one minute we're still in upward trajectory we have a resistance up here at 296.79 we need to break this 291 I'm going to put this trend line here 291.82 that's the resistance we got to break so I'm going to turn that into a red line knowing that I've got a that 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 means something to me and that's going to be my little resistance breakout and if we can get past that we can go to 292.41 and I'm going to pull up this 20 day 
one more time see if I can find a few more resistance levels there's one right there at 293.30 and then we have another one right up in here which is pretty solid right here at 294.62 pullback support right there at 290.32 pretty solid so we'll go back to the one day one minute now we've got some resistance lines we've got a pivot point resistance to break and we have our supports support levels no lower than 287.91 but I think it'll hold this channel right here at 290.32 to be your first support resistance to break at 291.82 and then we've got three different resistances up to the fourth final strong resistance at 296.71 please feel free to stop these charts anytime and write down these numbers but always when you post them, make sure that they come from I Love Stocks. Miss Vegas, next one. And that's going to be Roku. And that was another good call that I made. And I'll let Miss Vegas talk about it here. And then I'll tell you the option trade I made on it. Yeah. So, you know, Roku, I mean, listen, uh, this company does very well. I mean, Roku TV. I mean, uh, the stock, you know, definitely looks oversold. You know, it was up. It has, you know, recovered from the pullback that it had uh, for the last couple of days. Uh, but still definitely oversold. Uh, but the Bollinger Bands are wide. So longer term, is Roku and going to go up? I believe yes. I mean, I still think 106.77 is a bargain price. And I won't be shocked to see this go into like towards 110. But hey, Jim, I'd like to hear what you think about Roku. Oh, man, I was really on this trade Friday. I noticed, oh, yeah. we, I noticed we had a sharp knife on it first thing in the morning. And there's one thing I like to emphasize to people in the room that are making bad trades. And if you're going to sit here at the desk for a while, is to let that first 15 to 30 minutes dictate how you're going to trade the market. That, that, that'll, that'll give you the impression on if it's going to be a bullish day or a bearish day. I'm very bullish on Roku. And we've had a huge sell-off from 175 down to $98 on this trade. Some uh, economists said it's going back down to 60 and I kind of throw that away out in the trash right now. I had a, a 98 and an 88 support on it. But we did hit that 98 and it did and it has bounced back up. But let's look at the yearly chart first and we're going to pull up the yearly just to show you where I think why I called that solid support level under a hundred bucks because we had these two indicators right here that told me when it pulled back that that this was a solid support and it did bounce off that solid support and it ran all the way up to 140 at the time so let's go ahead and pull up the 20 day now and it did have a 176 high and we called this Vegas and I with Vegas's help called this out under 50 bucks and that was just a beautiful call we didn't take the trade all the way up there. I scalped it all the way up and then swung it a couple of times and then started playing options in it. And thank you, Miss Vegas, for encouraging me on becoming an options trader along with everything else that I do. It really makes a big difference on how the market dictates to me how I trade. And that's how opening up the doors to these options is really, for a man that's done over a million charts, I'm telling you that it's easier to follow the trends on these bigger tickers than it is these penny stocks. These pennies can drop on a knife, they can drop on an offering, and they can just slaughter you. I don't like swinging them at all, but I can swing it. I can swing these higher tickers and feel halfway comfortable. I did swing Roku and Starbucks. So this is the yearly chart. We're going to look at the 20 day right now. Kind of messed up with all the drawing I got on it, but we do have a resistance that we got to get to, and that's right up here, right around the 11181. And I personally took a 110 option trade at 225 for October 11th, and I was up almost 100% on it, and I held it over the uh, weekend. So we're going to pull up the one day, and this is how the trade went. It started knifing, it pulled back and created a triple bottom, created a rectangular or a horizontal triangle. And then I tell in the room, I said, after this third dip and the tape starts looking good and the blocks start coming in, it might be a good time to get in the trade. And a bunch of people took that trade with me. But it did have a triple bottom and it did break that triple top. And once that broke that triple top and started 
busting above. It ran all the way from 104.34, and that's about where I got in, a little bit higher than that. I jumped the, the gun on that, and it hit that middle uh, linear channel, moving average right there, and busted past that, and then pulled right back to it. So I usually call that a pivot point, a support, or a resistance. It depends on what side of the rail it is on. But you see it hit the top of it and pulled back. So we've got more room to run up on this. I've got a target of 108.86, and that's going to be Roku. And the next one that we're going to talk about, whoops, is uh, Starbucks. Well, you guys know I love my Starbucks. You sure do. I sure do. And um, by the way, they opened up a new Starbucks in Peterborough. Um, but also, Starbucks has, I was reading an article that they actually paid farmers $20 million more as coffee crisis is deepening so that's interesting they're giving farmers a cushion against the blow of tumbling coffee prices so um they paid more than eight thousand farmers in mexico el salvador and nicaragua a premium of 20 million us dollars um and that's on top of the regular amounts it pays for over future prices for specialty arabica beans so that was uh, an article that was uh posted here recently uh so costco you know i really like the brand i love the coffee love my lattes um you know but regarding the actual chart i mean starbucks right now is kind of showing a bit of weakness but again it made new highs on friday so you know this is a little bit of a cautious trade i mean longer term i still love starbucks and i think this is a really good price um, that's $85. I mean, to me, the stock should be a hundred bucks, but again, you got to trade the price and trade the tape and trade the chart. Um, if you like to invest, I think these are good deals. Um, if you just like to trade, you know, swing trade, um, option trade, then I'm going to turn it over to Jim and give us his thoughts on where he sees this chart going. Um, cause it does show definitely some weakness for sure on, on Starbucks, but Again, there's an opportunity here. So, Jim, let's hear about your thoughts on how you're trading Starbucks at the moment. Yeah, you know, Vegas and I talk about a lot about being in the now. And I think what brought this stock down is not the earnings, but actually the exposure it has in Hong Kong and China. And I think that's truly what brought this stock down. And But the fundamentals are still good. But the And then you got Lucky Coffee jumping in the scene, getting a name for itself for that new IPO. So I think that kind of brought it down a little bit, but I'm very uh, supportive of Starbucks and this pullback that it had. It did pull back to the bottom of that channel and bounced right off of it. And that's what I like about so much about this channel and how I'm going to kind of express my feelings about it in the room this week. But I got in the option on this trade here also. I got in at the um, October 11th uh, $88 strike at 18 cents and I got me 10 contracts so I'm gonna to try to at least get a hundred percent out of it maybe 200 I think it can go run right up to that $88 level that we have here on the yearly chart you did have an ascending triangle right here on that yearly chart that brought it up and, and made new highs up to 90 so I'm gonna stick with my $88 price target and if it dips on me a little bit I'm still a little bullish on it but that's the sediment that I get of reason why it fell back a little bit so we're going to go to the 20-day. We did hit the bottom of that channel. You see the downward channel on it right now, but we never could touch that line, and she's bounced up twice since. And that low support right here at, let me type it in, 83.92. So that's going to be your low support. Low, low, it's going to be the bottom of the channel. And you have got another support right here at 85.24. But I think we're going to go ahead and break this. We've got a little gap right here. We've got to get up. And if this catches up momentum, and I think next week's going to be a green week for the market, unless something happens uh, worldwide that brings it down or these, you know, just the news and the fake news and the algorithms. But we're going to break this resistance level at 86.01, which we started to after hours. We hit 86.09. And if we can get it up to 86.49, that's going to be a catalyst for it get to get up to that 87.78. And then we still have more room to climb on this trade. 
So, like I said, the only catalyst that I think is bringing it down right now, and you have to give Starbucks kudos for sharing the wealth with them farmers. I mean, that's that's really a nice gesture. That's really a nice gesture. You know, I'm impressed with that, big time. So, 87.78 is going to be your hard resistance, and if we can break past that, we've got a couple more. But that's going to be your third resistance. And I'm going to repeat the resistance levels, 86.49. 87.24 and 87.78 and we're going to move on to the next ticker right now and that's going to be DOCU you know what I got to tell you I love this one here um, you know DocuSign you know the stock has surged in September I mean this is the e-signature leader it posted a better than expected second quarter earnings report with a jump in revenue they also raised its full year guidance and the stock finished the month up 32%. I mean, can you believe this? This is just fantastic. I mean, the company's revenue jumped 41% in the quarter to 235.6 million. They beat estimates. The estimates were 220.9 million. Subscription revenue was up 39%. I think this growth is definitely encouraging to investors because if you remember, it did plunge in the first quarter earnings. Um, so I think this is a very promising sign for future revenue growth and the expanding adoption of its agreement cloud. And um, I just want to mention as well on this particular stock. I mean, if you look at the weekly chart, it's bullish to me. I mean, this is room to go. I love pocket pivots and that's exactly what I'm staring at. And Jim, I wanna hear about your thoughts on DocuSign. All right. We're in an upward linear channel on a 20 day. So we're going to look here at the yearly. I always like to look at that yearly chart first. It gives me an impression if I like the trade or not. We did bounce off that channel right here. It was a buy signal as I wrote down here in this in this on this video. And we did have a double bottom buy signal right down here back during last year when we had that crash. And then she went ahead and ran all the way up to a resistance level from, I mean, the support level on that double bottom was right around the 37.17. And within three months, it ran all the way up to 86, 56, 58.86. And that's going to be our bottom line support. Now, see how I, I look at this. I look at that high, and we did break out from that high, and that's going to become a support level, a solid support. I don't want to see it go below. 58.86 and that will show a big sign of weakness but for right now with the great earnings that it did have I mean they were down probably from the previous quarter earnings per share I mean from one to seven but yet they still were nice and it did bounce off that middle moving average on that linear channel right here at 56.09 and created a new high up here at, at 65.07 which my resistance is at 64.76 and that was a sell signal at that time and it did pull back and found a little cup and handle or at least starting of a fish hook or a cup or as Miss Vegas would say a, a pocket pivot where it pulls back and then it starts to rebound and we're going to pull this up to the 20 day but you can see how I'm starting to on these charts starting to show buy signals and sell signals so when you get stop this chart you can take a look at them and and see where I how I arrive from these calls and how I find the support so I'm going to put this blue line at a red line support level and that's going to be a serious strong support and I'm going to put the width on it at two which the bigger the width the stronger the I want to make sure that it don't break below that we're going to go to the 20 day so I'm bullish on the trade by looking at it yearly now I'm looking at a 20 day and we've had a horizontal channel that ran from support at 59.09, 59.90, and it's bounced off that a few times. As you can see, one, two, three, four different times. That's going to be your low, low, your second support. Your low support is going to be that trend that I showed you on that previous high at 58.86. So the resistance we got to break for it to keep moving up, and then I'm going to draw another support level right in here. I gotta find me another support right there. I don't want to see it, you know. I think there's another one right here. That's what the support was for the day. So 
let's not see it go any lower than the 5886. I've got different supports right in here. The resistance that we do need to break is going to be that 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 line that 6259 all the way up to 67, but the hard resistance is 6473. And we're going to go to the daily and show you just what the daily looked like. It did pull back right at the opening once the earning once the employment numbers came out and they were good. Everything just took off and started run in an upward trend. Everything sold off, and then all of a sudden everything just bounced stronger than ever. And the market was down quite a bit. Thursday and Friday were rebound days, and I think when we go into next week, we're going to have a bullish week. And we got another one to talk about, and that's going to be BVSN. Oh, yeah. This uh, BVSN um, is extremely bullish. And uh, it's one of my little penny plays. I'm currently not in it at the moment, uh, but I do like the fact that it made a nice 52 week high, uh, pocket pivot, and definitely looking on a new uptrend. Had a nice parabolic rise as well on this uh, BVSN. And I don't actually think I've ever traded this actual uh, ticker for Broad Vision, they're into internet software and services, they're in the technology business. Um, and so definitely, if you like to trade these pennies, uh, definitely one to watch for sure. They do a lot of enterprise apps for the workforce and a lot of customer engagement. And uh, they have a lot of tools available in so many languages. Um, they actually add to e-business platforms and uh, they're a very, very um, online uh, digital hub platform. So, Jim, let's hear about this Broad Visions chart. Yeah. Um, it improved its – it reduced its its second quarter loss by 86%, all the way from a negative 6, which was at a 43 earnings per share, which is a real good sign that it's on a comeback. Also, ESW Capital holds a 20, almost a 21% stake in the company, and that came out on the 27th. And it also hit a 52-week high. So you've got three catalysts there that can bring this stock up even higher. And we're going to look at the yearly chart. It's an uncrowded trade, as Miss Vegas would say. And the pivot point on the yearly is right about where that middle of that line is at 133. We did have a beautiful five-day breakout, six-day breakout. I see a support level right here at 207. And I see one here at 188, and I see one right here at 169. And we're going to pull this up to the 20-day. We are at the top of that channel right now, and it did close up top of that channel. So that's something to keep an eye on. I think it could pull back just a little bit and then start to retrace and rebounce. But we, And also, it shows the same thing here on the 20-day. It hit the top of that channel and went just a little bit below that. So I'm going to add a support level right here to the middle line, see if it holds above that. If not, it can pull back a little bit more and hit these other three supports. And I'm going to draw another support level right in here at 229 and also at 2, it's hard, I'm going to say 242. And the resistance we've got to break on that 52 week high is going to be right here at 264 up to the 276. But this has had a very beautiful run so let's see if we can get this no lower than the 207 that's going to be a strong buy I'm going to put a red line on that so I can remember that that's going to be my uh, strong buy support if I get to look at it and I'll set an alert I'll go to create alert to the mark above 207 we'll go to the ask and we're going to create us an alert right there so that thing will buzz if it does pull back and dip to that place and that, that and it can i mean it, it just broke out friday and when these dips happen they can dip on down and bounce right back up and consolidate and create a double top so 264 is a resistance that we got to break and the low the, the the pivot point the low support i don't want to see going lower is 207 and then you got your first and second one right here at 242 and 229 and that's bvsn and that's it all right well you know what i think that's going to be a great week and uh i think also it's important for everyone to also you know 
you don't need to be in so many trades. And, um, you know, I like the quote someone mentioned the other day, uh, but box and he said, you know, um, sometimes a good trade is not a trade, is not taking a trade. And there's nothing wrong sometimes when the markets are not stable, you don't feel comfortable, don't trade. Save your money for the good setups that come your way. And uh, money is made waiting sometimes too, waiting for the right opportunity. So you don't have to feel like to trade all the time. Um, there's always opportunities that will come. So don't feel that you're missing out. But sometimes, you know, people that, you know, they don't want, they can't sit still. It's hard to do. I find it's a challenge for me too. I'm working on it. Uh, sometimes to trade less is better. And uh, I think that's a great idea. So I'm going to try to use that and try to do that this week and see how, how that goes. And I'll let you guys know next week how that worked out. And that's, Jim, any other thoughts to that's, add? That's the, approximately, that's the, about the, the way I trade. I trade less, but I find the good setups. And I don't jump into every trade that's called, but I put them on my watch yeah. list and I'll study the charts and I'll wait for the right uh, pullback on them. I'm, I like to buy at support. I'm not one to buy at resistance unless it's really got some killer news on it or we hear George talk about it from the trade exchange or, or, or something that's really some news pops up. Vegas and I always are always jumping in them trades and scalping them real fast. But I hardly ever, and I started swinging more trades now that I'm dealing with these bigger cap tickers. I feel a lot more comfortable doing that than I did playing the penny stocks. But I'm, I'm a good scalper on the pennies too. But, you know, I, I, I get in and out on an engulfing candle. I don't feel that you know I don't think I have to do that with these bigger tickers I think I can go ahead and ride that engulfing candle up to another one and they're different trends the trends are a lot more respective respectful than the the penny plays are because I mean you could jump up on a 50 60 cent jump on an engulfing candle in one minute on a penny trade but when it comes to to these bigger tickers they don't they don't jump up like that they, they take their time you know and and it's just more consolidated and more more bullish to me. And that's about all I really wanted to say. Also, please follow us here. on we got a link here on the side to our Twitter page. Hit that follow button. We're up to 677 followers in a few months. We also have our stock twits icons right here, Pinterest, Facebook, YouTube. And I want to show you this one final thing. We do have also have a store here where you can sell where you can buy merchandise that we have for our, you know, just, just so I, this weekend I bought me a, this fleece right here, this hoodie, and I also got me this Stock Chicks coffee cup. So that's Jim in Vegas. You have just anything you want to say till the end here? No, I wish everyone a great weekend. Enjoy your Sunday and see you all tomorrow and have a great week trading. That's the Sunday's edition report. Today is September, October the 6th, 2019. And we wish every, I think next week's going to be a bullish week. So I'm going to be really, really having a good time next week. And we do appreciate it. I love stocks and we love stocks.